File, 6 by 880 dpi, Piment Rouge, view of cellar FM Mez stairs to peel, JPG, thumb, right, Le Piment Rouge restaurant in Montreal. A restaurant French, sto, listen, or an eatery, is a business which prepares and serves food and drinks to customers in exchange for money. Meals are generally served and eaten on the premises, but many restaurants also offer takeout and food delivery services, and some offer only takeout and delivery. Restaurants vary greatly in appearance and offerings, including a wide variety of cuisines and service models ranging from inexpensive fast food restaurants and cafeterias to mid-priced family restaurants, to high-priced luxury establishments. In Western countries, most mid-to-high-range restaurants serve alcoholic beverages such as beer and wine. Some restaurants serve all the major meals, such as breakfast, lunch, and dinner e.g., major fast food chains, diners, hotel restaurants, and airport restaurants. Other restaurants may only serve a single meal e.g., a pancake house may only serve breakfast or they may serve two meals e.g., lunch and dinner. Types Restaurants are classified or distinguished in many different ways. The primary factors are usually the food itself e.g. vegetarian, seafood, steak, the cuisine e.g. Italian, Chinese, Japanese, Indian, French, Mexican, Thai or the style of offering e.g. tapas bar, a sushi train, a taste-it restaurant, a buffet restaurant or a yum cha restaurant. Beyond this, restaurants may differentiate themselves on factors including speed see fast food, formality, location, cost, service, or novelty themes such as automated restaurants. Restaurants range from inexpensive and informal lunching or dining places catering to people working nearby, with modest food served in simple settings at low prices, to expensive establishments serving refined food and fine wines in a formal setting. In the former case, customers usually wear casual clothing. In the latter case, depending on culture and local traditions, customers might wear semi-casual, semi-formal or formal wear. Typically, at mid- to high-priced restaurants, customers sit at tables, their orders are taken by a waiter, who brings the food when it is ready. After eating, the customers then pay the bill. In some restaurants, such as workplace cafeterias, there are no waiters, the customers use trays, on which they place cold items that they select from a refrigerated container and hot items which they request from cooks, and then they pay a cashier before they sit down. Another restaurant approach which uses few waiters is the buffet restaurant. Customers serve food onto their own plates and then pay at the end of the meal. Buffet restaurants typically still have waiters to serve drinks and alcoholic beverages. Fast food restaurants are also considered a restaurant. The traveling public has long been catered for with ships' messes and railway restaurant cars which are, in effect, traveling restaurants. Many railways, the world over, also cater for the needs of travelers by providing railway refreshment rooms, a form of restaurant, at railway stations. In the 2000s, a number of traveling restaurants, specifically designed for tourists, have been created. These can be found on trams, boats, buses, etc. Topic: Restaurant staff. A restaurant's proprietor is called a restaurateur. This derives from the French verb restaurer, meaning to restore. Professional cooks are called chefs, with there being various finer distinctions, e.g., sous chef, chef de party. Most restaurants other than fast food restaurants and cafeterias will have various waiting staff to serve food, beverages and alcoholic drinks, including busboys who remove used dishes and cutlery. In finer restaurants, this may include a host or hostess, a maitre de hotel to welcome customers and to seat them, and a sommelier or wine waiter to help patrons select wines. A new route to becoming a restauranter, rather than working one's way up through the stages, is to operate a food truck. Once a sufficient following has been obtained, a permanent restaurant site can be opened. This trend has become common in the UK and the US. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Chef's table. A chef's table is a table located in the kitchen of a restaurant reserved for VIPs and special guests. Patrons may be served a themed tasting menu prepared and served by the head chef. Restaurants can require a minimum party and charge a higher flat fee. 
Because of the demand on the kitchen's facilities, chef's tables are generally only available during off-peak times. History Asia China In China, food catering establishments that may be described as restaurants have been known since the 11th century in Kaifeng, China's capital during the first half of the Song dynasty Probably growing out of the tea houses and taverns that catered to travelers, Kaifeng's restaurants blossomed into an industry catering to locals as well as people from other regions of China. There is a direct correlation between the growth of the restaurant businesses and institutions of theatrical stage drama, gambling and prostitution which served the burgeoning merchant middle class during the Song dynasty. Restaurants catered to different styles of cuisine, price brackets, and religious requirements. Even within a single restaurant much choice was available, and people ordered the entree they wanted from written menus. An account from 1275 writes of Hangzhou, the capital city for the last half of the dynasty, The people of Hangzhou are very difficult to please. Hundreds of orders are given on all sides, this person wants something hot, another something cold, a third something tepid, a fourth something chilled, one wants cooked food, another raw, another chooses roast, another grill. The restaurants in Hangzhou also catered to many northern Chinese who had fled south from Kaifeng during the Yurchin invasion of the 1120s, while it is also known that many restaurants were run by families formerly from Kaifeng. Europe Greece In ancient Greece and ancient Rome, thermopala singular thermopolium were small restaurant bars that offered food and drinks to customers. A typical thermopolium had L-shaped counters in which large storage vessels were sunk, which would contain either hot or cold food. Their popularity was linked to the lack of kitchens in many dwellings and the ease with which people could purchase prepared foods. Furthermore, eating out was considered an important aspect of socializing. Roman Empire In Pompeii, 158 thermopala with service counters have been identified throughout the town. They were concentrated along the main axis of the town and the public spaces where they were frequented by the locals. France before the restaurant Dining out in Paris went through several phases before the restaurant developments in the rest of France typically lagged behind the capital in the 13th century inns and taverns already served varied food bread cheese bacon roasts etc Parisians could also buy what was essentially takeout from roasters and pastry cooks who also could cater meals pastry here meant any food served in dough often meat pies for instance the Flemish word, cabaret, became increasingly known going forward. An early cabaret was very like a tavern, theoretically a wine shop, but in practice serving food as well, yet cabarets became a more elite option. At the start of the 16th century, cabarets, taverns and inns all served meals. Statutes of the time list ingredients which would have allowed for some places to serve very sophisticated meals. These statutes also stated that the official prices per item were to be posted at the entrance, this was the first official mention of menus. By the end of the century, cabarets served the best food and a number, such as the Petit Moor, had particular reputations. But it was also at the end of the century 1599 that cooks caterers later known as treaders, got their first statutes. While cabarets continued to serve good meals and often to an elite clientele, the treaders gradually laid claim to all sophisticated food service, ultimately limiting taverns and cabarets to serving little more than roast or grilled meats. Towards the end of the 17th century, both inns and then treaders began to offer hosts' tables, tables d'hote, where one paid a set price to sit at a collective table and eat a predetermined meal. 
Despite a common claim however, this was not the only way to dine and items, in at least some cases, could still be ordered individually whether handheld menus were already available is unknown. Nor were diners obliged to sit at a common table other than at a table d'hote. <laughs> Birth of the modern restaurant The term, restaurant was first associated with an eatery in 18th century Paris, when Mathurin Rose de Chantoiseau founded a restorer restaurateur on the Rue des Poulies, now part of the Rue du Lou. Chantoiseau himself said it was founded in 1766, but the first mentions are from 1767. Note that in 1782, Le Grand Dossier named Boulanger as the founder, and this is the version which has persisted until recently. However, Spang firmly demonstrates that it was Rose de Chantoiseau. Chantoiseau's new establishment, effectively a health food outlet, resembled a café in being, unlike earlier eateries, elegantly decorated. Its main product was a special type of bouillon called a restaurant restaurant. Note that if the first restaurant served bouillons, it was never, as is sometimes claimed, the special type of restaurant later known as a bouillon restaurant. However, Chantoiseau offered other supposedly restorative foods, including macaroni. Others soon imitated him. Meanwhile, Chantoiseau himself became a treader, even as many treaders added restaurateur to their names, becoming treaders restaurateurs. In the 1780s, as the revolution approached, elite cooks from grand households began to open grander versions of these places which, even if they were officially treaders restaurateurs, that is hybrids of treaders and restaurateurs, became known simply as restaurateurs. Use of the term restaurant for the establishment itself only became common in the 19th century. With the revolution, the emigration of aristocratic employers led more cooks to open their own places. Elegance was now common in the best restaurateurs, however the original idea of serving restorative bouillons had faded away. The first luxury restaurant in Paris, called the Taverne Anglaise, was opened at the beginning of 1786, shortly before the French Revolution, by Antoine Beauvilliers, the former chef of the Count of Provence, at the Palais Royal. It had mahogany tables, linen tablecloths, chandeliers, well-dressed and trained waiters, a long wine list and an extensive menu of elaborately prepared and presented dishes. In June 1786 the Provost of Paris issued a decree giving the new kind of eating establishment official status, authorizing restaurateurs to receive clients and to offer them meals until 11 in the evening in winter and midnight in summer. A rival restaurant was started in 1791 by Mayo, the former chef of the Duke of Orleans, which offered a wine list with 22 choices of red wine and 27 of white wine. By the end of the century there were other luxury restaurants at the Grand Palais, Hure, the Couvert Espagnol, Favrier, the Grotte Flamand, Vary, Mass and the Café de Chartres still open, now Le Grand Vifor. North America. United States In the United States, it was not until the late 18th century that establishments that provided meals without also providing lodging began to appear in major metropolitan areas in the form of coffee and oyster houses. The actual term, restaurant, did not enter into the common parlance until the following century. Prior to being referred to as restaurants, these eating establishments assumed regional names such as Eating House, in New York City, Restorator, in Boston, or Vittling House, in other areas. Restaurants were typically located in populous urban areas during the 19th century and grew both in number and sophistication in the mid-century due to a more affluent middle class and to suburbanization. The highest concentration of these restaurants were in the West, followed by industrial cities on the eastern seaboard. In the 1970s, there was one restaurant for every 7,500 persons. In 2016, there were one million restaurants, one for every 310 people. The average person eats out five to six times weekly. 10% of the nation's workforce is composed of restaurant workers. <laughs> South America Brazil 
In Brazil, restaurants' varieties mirrors the multitude of nationalities that arrived in the country, Japanese, Arab, Lebanese, German, Italian, Portuguese and many more. Colombia In Colombia, a piquitadero is a type of casual or rustic eatery. Meals are often shared, and typical offerings include dishes such as chorizo, chicharrón, fried organs, fried yuca, maduro and corn on the cob. Customers order the foods they want and the prepared foods are served together on a platter to be shared. The word paquette can be used to refer to a common Colombian type of meal that includes meat, yuca and potatoes, which is a type of meal served at a piquitaderos. The verb form of the word paquette, piquiter, means to participate in binging, liquor drinking, and leisure activities in popular areas or open spaces. <inaudible> Peru In Peru, many indigenous, Spanish, and Chinese dishes are frequently found. Because of recent immigration from places such as China, and Japan, there are many Chinese and Japanese restaurants around the country, especially in the capital city of Lima. Guides Restaurant guides review restaurants, often ranking them or providing information to guide consumers type of food, handicap accessibility, facilities, etc. One of the most famous contemporary guides is the Michelin series of guides which accord from one to three stars to restaurants they perceive to be of high culinary merit. Restaurants with stars in the Michelin guide are formal, expensive establishments, in general the more stars awarded, the higher the prices. The main competitor to the Michelin guide in Europe is the guidebook series published by Galt Milau. Unlike the Michelin Guide which takes the restaurant décor and service into consideration with its rating, Galt Milau only judges the quality of the food. Its ratings are on a scale of 1 to 20, with 20 being the highest. In the United States, the Forbes Travel Guide previously the Mobile Travel Guides and the AAA Rate Restaurants on a similar 1 to 5 star Forbes or Diamond AAA scale. 3, 4, and 5 star, diamond ratings are roughly equivalent to the Michelin 1, 2, and 3 star ratings while 1 and 2 star ratings typically indicate more casual places to eat. In 2005, Michelin released a New York City guide, its first for the United States. The popular Zagat survey compiles individuals' comments about restaurants but does not pass an official critical assessment. Fresh Niche recommends plausible New York City restaurants for busy New Yorkers and visitors alike. The Good Food Guide, published by the Fairfax Newspaper Group in Australia, is the Australian guide listing the best places to eat. Chef's hats are awarded for outstanding restaurants and range from one hat through three hats. The Good Food Guide also incorporates guides to bars, cafes and providers. The Good Restaurant Guide is another Australian restaurant guide that has reviews on the restaurants as experienced by the public and provides information on locations and contact details. Any member of the public can submit a review. Nearly all major American newspapers employ food critics and publish online dining guides for the cities they serve. Some news sources provide customary reviews of restaurants, while others may provide more of a general listing service. More recently internet sites have started up that publish both food critic reviews and popular reviews by the general public. Economics Many restaurants are small businesses, and franchise restaurants are common. There is often a relatively large immigrant representation, reflecting both the relatively low startup costs of the industry thus making restaurant ownership an option for immigrants with relatively few resources and the cultural importance of food. Canada There are 86,915 commercial food service units in Canada, or 26.4 units per 10,000 Canadians. By segment, there are 38,797 full-service restaurants, 34,629 limited-service restaurants, 741 contract and social caterers, 
6,749 drinking placesfully 63% of restaurants in Canada are independent brands. Chain restaurants account for the remaining 37%, and many of these are locally owned and operated franchises. Topic European Union The EU27 has an estimated 1.6 metres businesses involved in accommodation and food services, more than 75% of which are small and medium enterprises. Topic. United States As of 2006, there are approximately 215,000 full-service restaurants in the United States, accounting for $298 billion in sales, and approximately 250,000 limited-service restaurants, accounting for $260 billion. Starting in 2016, Americans spent more on restaurants than groceries. In October 2017, The New York Times reported there are 620,000 eating and drinking places in the United States, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They also reported that the number of restaurants are growing almost twice as fast as the population. One study of new restaurants in Cleveland, Ohio found that one in four changed ownership or went out of business after one year, and six out of ten did so after three years. Not all changes in ownership are indicative of financial failure. The three year failure rate for franchises was nearly the same. Restaurants employed 912,100 cooks in 2013, earning an average $9.83 per hour. The waiting staff numbered 4,438,100 in 2012, earning an average $8.84 per hour. Joshi Liu of the Washington Post reports in 2014 that Americans are spending $683.4 billion a year dining out, and they are also demanding better food quality and greater variety from restaurants to make sure their money is well spent. Dining in restaurants has become increasingly popular, with the proportion of meals consumed outside the home in restaurants or institutions rising from 25% in 1950 to 46% in 1990. This is caused by factors such as the growing numbers of older people, who are often unable or unwilling to cook their meals at home and the growing number of single-parent households. It is also caused by the convenience that restaurants can afford people. The growth of restaurant popularity is also correlated with the growing length of the work day in the U.S., as well as the growing number of single parent households. Eating in restaurants has also become more popular with the growth of higher income households. At the same time, less expensive establishments such as fast food establishments can be quite inexpensive, making restaurant eating accessible to many. Topic. Employment The restaurant industry in the United States is large and quickly growing, with 10 million workers, one in every 12 U.S. residents work in the business, and during the 2008 recession, the industry was an anomaly in that it continued to grow. Restaurants are known for having low wages, which they claim are due to thin profit margins of 4 to 5 percent. For comparison, however, Walmart has a 1% profit margin. As a result of these low wages, restaurant employees suffer from three times the poverty rate as other U.S. workers, and use food stamps twice as much. Restaurants also employ marginalized groups. They are the largest employer of people of color. Restaurants rank as the second largest employer of immigrants. These workers statistically are concentrated in the lowest paying positions in the restaurant industry. In the restaurant industry, 39% of workers earn minimum wage or lower. Topic: <inaudible> Regulations. In many countries, restaurants are subject to inspections by health inspectors to maintain standards for public health, such as maintaining proper hygiene and cleanliness. As part of these inspections, cooking and handling practices of ground beef are taken into account to protect against the spread of E. coli poisoning. The most common kind of violations of inspection reports are those concerning the storage of cold food at appropriate temperatures, proper sanitation of equipment, regular hand washing and proper disposal of harmful chemicals. Simple steps can be taken to improve sanitation in restaurants. As sickness is easily spread through touch, restaurants are encouraged to regularly wipe down tables, door knobs and menus. Depending on local customs and the establishment, restaurants may or may not serve alcoholic beverages. 
Restaurants are often prohibited from selling alcoholic beverages without a meal by alcohol sale laws. Such sale is considered to be activity for bars, which are meant to have more severe restrictions. Some restaurants are licensed to serve alcohol, fully licensed, or permit customers to bring your own alcohol. BYO, BYOB. In some places, restaurant licenses may restrict service to beer, or wine and beer. See also <laughs> Notes and references Bibliography Fierro, Alfred Histoire et Dictionnaire de Paris. Robert Lafont. ISBN 2221078624. Fierro, Alfred 1962. Daily Life in China on the Eve of the Mongol Invasion, 1250–1276. Stanford, Stanford University Press. ISBN 0-8047-0720-0. Spang, Rebecca L. 2000, the Invention of the Restaurant. Harvard University Press West, Stephen H. 1997. Playing with Food, Performance, Food, and the Aesthetics of Artificiality in the Sung and Yuan. Harvard Journal of Asiatic Studies. 57 67 267–106. 10.2307, 2719361. Retrieved 9 July 2013. Early Restaurants in America. UNLV Libraries Digital Collections. University of Nevada Las Vegas. Retrieved April 30, 2013. <laughs> Further reading Applebaum, Robert, Dishing It Out, In Search of the Restaurant Experience, London, Riechsen, 2011. Fleury, Hélène, 2007. Linde en miniature à Paris. Le décor des restaurants. Diasporas Indiennes dans la ville. Homs et Migrations, number 1268 to 1269, 2007, 168 to 73. Haley, Andrew P. Turning the Tables: Restaurants and the Rise of the American Middle Class, 1880 to 1920. University of North Carolina Press, 2011, 384 pp. Kiefer, Nicholas M. August 2002. Economics and the Origin of the Restaurant. PDF. Cornell Hotel and Restaurant Administration Quarterly, 43-5-7. doi, 10.1177, Lundberg, Donald E., The Hotel and Restaurant Business, Boston, Connors Books, 1974. ISBN 0 8436 2044 7. Whitaker, Jan. Tea at the Blue Lantern Inn A Social History of the Tea Room Craze in America. St. Martin's Press. <laughs> External links Media related to restaurant at Wikimedia Commons. Quotations related to restaurant at Wikiquote.